Happy Valentine's Day, Joe. Happy Valentine's Day, Andrew. You know what? I'm not, I'm in a better mood this Valentine's Day than I was the last, I can tell you this. Do you? Yeah, I just think that, like, even going forward. I'm, I'm sorry, just, I don't know why I said do you. Which do is that, you. Do you in a better mood? Do you in a better mood? <laughs> Are that's you? That's very me. That's her. <laughs> I am, I am. It's just like, you know what? It's, it's, t- it's time to no longer sit in your sorrows. I'm no longer sitting in my sorrows. What does that mean? Sitting in your sorrows? Yeah. Or sitting with your sorrow? I don't know. You like you I are always sitting with something. You've sat with gratitude. You've sat with sorrow. I'm you've always sat with Epstein sitting on, that, on the flight. I'm always sitting, and I'm sitting in something. It's usually shit. I just like, I stepped in shit. No, I stepped in shit this weekend. You were a with shit my new, stepper with my new sneakers, and you know the ones. I know the one. What were your what were your what was your feeling? Well, I was leaving three dollar bill. Well, mm-hmm. and I was yeah, I honestly one, drank for the first time coming. in a little bit. And yeah, it was my fault. And suddenly there was just this insane texture below my foot. And it was a massive pile of dog shit. No one talks about, about the, the texture. texture. Everyone's talking about the stink, the post step stink. And it barely stunk. Because it was just so, like, I think I was just so overwhelmed. And I was with a group of five people, and only, like, one of them knew I had stepped. And I tried to tell everyone, because then when you step in a pile of dog shit, you want to let everyone know. Of course, you have to. I didn't, like, the smell is not coming from me. I'm, I stepped in a pile of dog shit. There's no always knew. an explanation to come. You know and what I, I mean? was, Yeah, and then I was standing in puddles trying to wash it off. And then I had to go back to our friend's apartment and, and scrub, scrub. scrub. Oh, that's a horrible thing. But to I happen. think that there's that's been happening. I think you've been stepping in a lot of shit. I lately. haven't been stepping in the shit, but I've been seeing a lot of shit lately, and not just yours. Well, because not often lately have I been shitting on the streets. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I would say the same exact thing, and I'm not just seeing shit like in the middle of the sidewalk. I'm seeing it lingering along sidewalks. Yes. Do- sh- like dogs are dragging. And where are these dog owners is my question. Like, where are the bags? Where are the bags? But it's where is the respect for mm-hmm. yourself, for your neighbors, mm-hmm. for your home? I don't get how for you can. Could- for your home. It's like everyone seems to forget you live here. Like yeah. pretend that this is a city that you live in. Mm-hmm. Like what is going on? Like Williamsburg, Brooklyn is dog shit central. Yeah. Like something is happening to the dog owners in Williamsburg. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense. You think about who can afford Williamsburg. Because people don't give a fuck because they're staying in their high rises. They don't give a fuck about the street. Nope. And they said, they're saying, I'm not using those plastic bags. And I'm, I'm not going to train my dog. I'm not going to train my dog. And you know what? And you know what? People want to talk about the city smelling like shit in the first place. I'll well, tell you why. It's not the rats. It's not the it's garbage on the side dog of the road. Shit. It's your dog shitting on the way to Bond Vet, where there are 18 different veterinarian <laughs> clinics Can that you? I can't even get into on my it is own. Literally, it is every single person sitting at the butcher's daughter. Their dog shot on the way there, and they did not pick it up. Like it is. Yeah. I'm sorry to typecast, but you can tell whose dogs are are not being looked after. Every French mm-hmm. bulldog, every Aussie doodle in Williamsburg is a criminal. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you another thing about those dogs. Normally not <laughs> now I'm typecasting dogs. Not normally the big, big dogs. I feel like if they're laying a long one, that owner's gonna pick it up. It's the small it's the small little shih tzus, if you don't mind me saying that. <laughs> I took it I took it as I just a bridge never too heard far. that in my entire life. You took it a bridge too far. Has anyone ever said that saying? I just got into a screaming match with my mother at lunch with Andrew over me saying the phrase, a bridge too far, and then everyone deciding that I'm crazy and that's not an expression. No, Joe, it wasn't that you were crazy. It was that you used a bridge too far and your mother was just saying it's it could be just a bit too far. But I was like, that's not the expression. The expression is a bridge too far. And I think that sometimes when people bring that a bridge too far up it it just feels like it came out of nowhere but i didn't think so i just it rolls off my tongue i've been saying it since i was a child and a lot of things roll off your tongue a lot of things do that are quite shocking to some what is that now i want you to clarify that statement some things don't need to be clarified that's that is a that is incorrigible damages that you would bestow on me by saying a lot of things that are shocking roll off my tongue and am I, I saying slurs mm-hmm. You're no, you are not. <laughs> let me clarify for the listeners at home. You are not saying slurs. Thank you. And I apologize for for causing like 
harm to you, you and damage to your spirit and to my businesses and to your businesses because i would never want that for you especially not on the valentine's day episode it's all about love thank you of course are you in love? Let's not go. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Good children. Okay. I like that one. It was. You had a problem with that? No, it, it wasn't even a problem, Joe. I just think that you chose a note that like is beautiful in context. It was like minor. It was a minor. It's like, I just can't do anything right. No, that's not true. I can't do anything right. Hmm. <laughs> How the tables have turned. Yep. Um, hey, guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 23 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And all of the nostalgia, trauma, and Valentine's Days that go along with it. Mm-hmm. I'm almost thinking you should talk more in that intro. I feel like I talk a lot. Hey guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 23 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and Valentine's Days that go along with it. That felt good. It felt it felt like we're going to have to get used to it, yeah. but it felt good. Yeah. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. I get, it's something you got to get used to. You well, got it. You well, well, yeah. I don't. I. Th- this is the thing. Do you know how to ride a bike, Joe? I. I'm petrified of a bike, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because lately, what I've ex- been experiencing in the city that we live is people are running through red lights. Even if you're on a bike, if you're on a motorcycle, you're seeing people run through red lights. Are like you? driver like vehicles? No bicycles. Oh yes, yeah, bicycles. And I well, you don't have to run through the red light. No one's making you. Well, then I'm causing traffic. Then there's going to be a collision. I almost feel because someone behind me won't stop. You get hit by a bike? Yes. No. But well, I kind of, I kind of clipped a bicyclist with what? A motor vehicle. What? When? No, it wasn't my fault. It was my fault. No, I, I don't think I was shocked by this. No one got hurt. No one got hurt. It was, I was coming off of the exit. I was heading to Garden City. I'll never forget. And I was popping out because you have to make a right and I couldn't uh-huh. see. And then there was a bicyclist coming and wasn't stopping. They were on the sidewalk and they saw cars coming and they didn't stop. And he kind of clipped the side of my car. What happened next? He went. Da-da. I was like, you know what? It's all about love. I'm going to kill you with kindness. And I didn't blow up in that moment. I didn't because I also was so mortified. I was like, oh my God, I'm going How to jail. You here? I'm going to jail. At 18. Okay. You. I had a lot you of should things have your happen. license taken away. I had a lot of things happen to me when I was about 17 to 18 in a motor vehicle that should never be discussed. And also, I probably ha- should have learned to maybe walk instead. Maybe, maybe, maybe ride walk. a bike. Maybe, maybe ride, ride a, bike. a bike. Wow. Would you ever ride a bike in the city? No. But I have been hit by a bicyclist. I have been hit by a bicyclist. And I'll tell you one thing. That's embarrassing. Was it by the Tacombi? That was you. That was, that was me. You. <laughs> that was you. The bell. He was the ringing bell. his bell, ignoring the stop signs going right into you. That was crazy. That was. Maybe his brakes broke. Maybe, maybe he was fighting for his life. Well, he he had to have been because then he hit a car. Oh, my God. Remember yes. that? I think oh. he almost went over the car. Yes. And it was almost a little bit of karmic justice because he was a bitch to you. Yeah, he was nasty. And I feel like you were at a low point. Weren't you? Wasn't it like a low day? It was, and then that bicyclist almost tried lower. to kill you. Couldn't have gotten lower. And again, I always live in fear about the left side of my body getting hit. And it was left, wasn't it? And it was left. I was walking across the street. He was going to come at me left side. Oh, my God. Why is everything hitting me in this moment? Even when I got into my car accident in high school, left, left side. side. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Like, it was two times so far that I've almost gotten hit in the left well, side. Well, maybe it's you know like Russian third. doll. Like, maybe they're, you're escaping death. I mean, come on. I'm always escaping yeah, death. just being here is escaping death in a lot of ways. But I'll say, back to the bike, and then I'm going to leave it there. I'm getting to a point where I'm going to sit on the saddle again, not just in the studio, but on the streets. I believe you. And I'm going to I'm gonna pedal these feet until they can't pedal no longer. All right. Thank you. I was hit by a bike crossing the street in Midtown in 2019. And I'll never forget, like, I know I had the right of way. Like, all the other bicyclists yep. had stopped. This man collides with me as I'm listening to Successful by Ariana Grande. 
as I'm mm. listening to Successful by Ariana Grande. What do you think that what do you think that means for you? It was pretty shocking because I was listening to that song as a spell, you know, that that was the vibe of me. I was like, yep. this is, I need to manifest making money. I was like, mm-hmm. I need to have a dollar to my name yep. so badly. Um, and then, and then it hit me like a bike, a bike hit me. And the universe said, not today. <laughs> not today. Not today. Get but back it was to like, work. I remember him being mean about it. Like, the bicyclist who was in the wrong was like, man, like, fuck off. Like, watch where you're going. And I was like, it's li-. like, then there was someone else who defended me. Someone oh. was like, it's a crosswalk and the lights are ours. Uh, I think what we're gathering is these losers on the bikes. They'll these dumb, defend stupid bozos. These bozos on the bikes will defend their actions until the grave. Well, I'll say one thing. Bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Bicyclists in New York City are oftentimes like at risk of death because of how unfairly, improperly planned New York is for bikes. Yes. Like they are risking their lives to bike, and they should have better fucking bike lanes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, why do so many bicyclists have attitudes? I think maybe that's why. Why exactly? But but this is going to just become a bike episode because those lanes are too small. My hips couldn't even fit in those lanes. These wide, these wide honkers couldn't fit in those lanes. They couldn't. So I, I give them credit for like feelings. They're small in those lanes. I feel like bicyclists are usually narrow people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Narrow people with a, with a big attitude. Is Good that for what them. people say about us? Narrow no one has called us narrow ever in our entire lives. Why would you say that? Why do you want that? You're right. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> it felt um, like a normal transition into the episode, but we've actually already done that. So that's no, what's but, shocking. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Today is our Valentine's Day episode, so I'm sure we are going to be talking about the nice parts of Valentine's Day, the falling in love aspects, things that we didn't talk about last episode and if we or last year. And if we did. Get ready we to did it again because there's only so much love that could be but spread. I think we're both in new contexts. We are this year. I think that like even if we were to do the same exact theme yearly, there would be a completely different take on it. Yes, every year. Last year we did the date. Last year we did the full. We did two episodes. We did two yep. Valentines. One was yeah a fully improvised first date, and the well, other one was. About just about Valentine's Day. I do think that the improvised date often goes overlooked. No, people comment on it sometimes and they're like, why do I have chills? So people are getting it. People get what we did there. How can we get an award for an episode? I Don't may- say the A word to me again. On this Valentine's Day, I'll take an A word. It's 2006. Yes. You're walking into school on Valentine's Day. Do you have a Valentine's Day in fourth no. grade? In Valentine's th- in fourth grade? In fourth grade, no. They stopped in about second. Your your girlfriends. I mean, my girlfriend's your wags. In, my girlfriend stopped in second grade, but fourth grade, I definitely think I was still trying, but no one really wanted it. I wasn't necessarily upset that I didn't have a Valentine because I knew the goods that I was gonna get in school. Yeah. And at that time my love was food. And you were like chocolate hearts, chocolate candy, candy hearts. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. You know what I mean? So I was like, I'm fine going into school today. It was always a fun excuse, I think. It was a fun it was a fun day. I always loved the colors. I love red and pink as colors. Mm-hmm. I think that there's something about Valentine's Day decor that really, really, really makes me happy. Well, it I think always that's, has. I think that's the that's the thing. That's what they're trying to and go. And it for. works. It's always worked for me. It's it's making you happy. It's making you feel something. Yes. Something. But you know what? I think it was introduced in school when it comes to the food, the candies, the everything. Because even if as I grew out of the grade school, college, I still was finding a way to go back to those chocolates. Were you picking them up for yourself? Every year. Every year. So far. You can't, 27 you can't years. Or my parents. Or, or I would at least know that when I went home, my mom would have yeah. a little something for me. But you were in college, like, going to buy chocolate hearts. Absolutely, Joe. I was getting boxes of chocolate for myself. You know what? I have to actually really respect that because someone has to – I can buy myself chocolates. I can hold my own hand. 
That's what it, Miley was singing about. Exactly. <laughs> that's and that's was. what I was doing. I wasn't buying myself flowers. But you said, let me get a Russell Stove. Let me get a, a Russell Stove. Let me get let me get a Whitman sampler. You've been talking about a Whitman sampler now. I can't even believe I just heard that phrase. You mm-hmm. love a Whitman sampler. I love a Whitman sampler. Um what about you? Were well, you? Did you have dates? Yeah, I did. Up until sixth grade, I had Samantha. I'll never forget. And I don't think Sam got me this. I think my parents got me it. But I remember, and I was, I just, the image came to me the other day, and I have to buy one. I have to have one. The Love Lion from the Hallmark store. I may have mentioned this last year, but I don't care. Ha- the Hallmark store, which, do you remember a Hallmark store? I do remember a Hallmark store, and I remember the energies of Hallmark Don't you kind of well. miss it? I do miss it. I, you would always find me in the Hallmark store. You would find you with right the- up front. And you'd be finding me either in the card section or by the candles. You were looking at the cards? I was looking at the cards because sometimes the cards could give me a good laugh. And sometimes the cards were almost edgy. I feel like I feel like I saw my first penis on a it would be you, like on a Christmas card, ha- or it would be like Happy fiftieth. Look at these knockers. It was always like these low hanging tits <laughs> or like, like big balls. Yeah, ex- that's exactly. <laughs> yes. It's like turn in fifty, saggy balls, and you're like <laughs> every single card, and oh that would God. be a moment. Yeah, it'd it would be, be like a that cartoon nutsack really did something for me. Mm-hmm. But Hall- the Hallmark store in general did like I feel like it had like this the. It was, like, possessed by an English teacher. Like, the entire concept of a Hallmark store felt like there was an entity there yes. that would keep me safe. It, like It there, told a story. It told a story, and it, like, just made me feel like everything I looked at, I was like, this is for me. Like, mm-hmm. but aside, Webkins aside, they just had, like, little tchotchkes that I loved. It was the tchotchkes. It was also just, like, thing like signs with like the craziest sayings on them too yeah. that they would just have what if there? the hokey pokey really is what it's all about what if the hokey pokey really is what it's all about mm-hmm. what, what if, if it is what I, if? are you asking that question enough i still don't really know what that means that's what it's saying like if that's what life is all about is the hokey pokey is that the life that what you the want? fuck is the hokey pokey Who's hokey and who is pokey? What's the hokey pokey? Hokey pokey. Welcome to the stage. Hokey, hokey and pokey. pokey. That's good. What is it? You're putting your left arm in. You're putting your right arm in. You're putting your right arm out. You spin it all around. Do the hokey pokey, pokey. and you spin yourself around. That's, That's what, what it's, it's all about. about. That's what it's all about. I'm going to personally sit on that one. That's Well, you're going to sit on a lot this Valentine's Day. I think that the theme of this episode is just sitting, sitting on things. Sitting on bikes, sitting on dog Oops. shit, sitting, sitting on, on the hokey pokey. pokey. And sitting on whatever else wants to come my way this Valentine's Day. To bring it back to the Love Lion, Hallmark used to drop, I think, every holiday like an exclusive plush. Mm-hmm. And one year it was the Love Lion. And if you know the Love Lion, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I am so sorry yeah because it was the softest fur i've ever felt on a plush on a stuffed animal soft silky pink and a little bit of red highlights in that fur and then it had this gorgeous Mm. mane shaped like a heart and it purred it purred how much were you paying for this i don't know i got it as a gift and i had it for many years i think purring adds at least ten dollars to i'm sure i'm sure i went okay and let's be honest and i know that we've talked about how many Oh, you're still purring. That's how it did. Oh, I want you, you didn't let me do it. You didn't give me my stage. Can you go, actually, well, now do, it's okay. No, do it again. Do it again. No, I don't want to. Welcome to the stage, Hokey. I, I can almost roll long. my R's. I can't, yeah. You can't roll your R's? I don't want to talk about this on Valentine's Day. Like, I can't roll my R's. And I've never been able to, and it was really embarrassing in Spanish class. I actually can't imagine living with that. Like, because you're somebody who, like, you're good at a lot of things. I'm okay at some things. But when I feel like when other people can do that, and it's just so, like, this big ass tongue doesn't fit in my mouth. Well, it fits in other things. Anyways, anyways, have you ever, has your heart, well, has your heart ever skipped a beat? Well, I have an irregular heart. I have an arrhythmia. I know It's that. been triggered recently by stress. It's been. You haven't been telling me this. I actually am just going to cut to the to the, <laughs> the, to the Patreon two weeks ago where I sit down with Andrew and inform him of my heart condition. My heart. I've heart. I, yeah, you I, have congestive heart. No, 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 no. I have an arrhythmia. <laughs> Caffeine, alcohol, stress. 
make it worse. I know Two that you have weeks ago I where know I that said you it was have a triggered by stress. But you don't tell me these things day by day when you're experiencing the heart arrhythmia. No, because it's just the thing I experience at all times. Should I be checking in on you more? No, it's okay. I shouldn't be drinking caffeine and I shouldn't be drinking alcohol. Well, as you were sipping your coffee. But has your heart ever skipped a beat for love? My heart beats for love. But it's never skipping for love? Why are people saying that? Like, what, well, what's the skip of the beat? I'm well, confused. that's something. That's an interesting statement that you're making here. So Please. you're saying it's like when you're that moment. Yeah, your heart. You've had that happen. I can guarantee you. Just looking at you physically, I know your heart has skipped a beat for love. Well, I don't know if it was love. I feel like my heart skips a beat the first time I meet somebody. Every time. Every single time I meet somebody it's that just like anxiety. L- it's your arrhythmia. It's it is my. It is. It's just my anxiety. Yeah, pro- absolutely. But I feel like my heart's not skipping a beat like romantically i kind of wish it was well sorry thank god i saw myself there i feel like i remember going on dates well here's the thing we didn't and breaking news gay people had stunted development you know like this is nothing new and we've talked about it a million times in this podcast but we didn't get the opportunity to like feel the feelings that like teenagers feel mm-hmm. when it comes to like dating and romance and love. Like it is a tragedy. We'll never know what teenage love, like puppy love felt like. No. And I think it also gives you like the training wheels to know what those feelings are as an adult. Like, I don't know if your heart is necessarily going to skip a beat on a date. Because my, I, I made my heart not, beat exactly well that's part of it so we made sure i made sure but i experience puppy love i love a puppy i love a dog and i would put my love into those dogs because i couldn't put my love (laughs) oh my god this is where this is is not the first time you said exactly that on this podcast i'm like so scared because (laughs) it's like the second time you've said you fucked off normally the first normally the first time you can get away with it but the second time that you say something it's just confirmed so it's like what do i really mean you couldn't resist Lisa's dog. I couldn't resist resist Lisa's dog. I love animals. Once I went over to Lisa's house and I couldn't resist her dog. But yeah, it is like it is sad in retrospect to look at it that way. But it is kind of, it is kind of nice though, because now I'm kind of like I'm experiencing that all over again. Yeah, am I 27 years old? For sure. Sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of. And I'm like kind of like almost 28 actually, but. You know what? If I'm experiencing that about 13 years later than the normal person does, I'm okay with that. I'm just different. To quote your favorite artist, you are not alone. You are not alone. Like, I think that, like... You are here with me. Who is singing that? You are not alone. Is it Michael Jackson? (laughs) Yeah. I love love that you said that's my favorite artist. I think that um, that's also a part of it is, like, I think so many people, like, feel like freaks. Feel like freaky, crazy freaks because they never, like, were in a relationship. They never, like, experienced those feelings. Um, When in reality, it's like, I think so many people feel that way. And I think that it's only more. It's only increased more. Maybe I don't really know what's going on with gays. I feel like they're, like, out in high school a little bit more. Now. um, Now. But I also think that that's probably more the media perception than in real life. But, you know... I mean, because Heartstopper exists. Exactly. And I, I watch Heartstopper and I believe that every gay in every American high school is out because of Heartstopper. Exactly. You know what I mean? But if I had Heartstopper in high school, I think I would have came out. Mom, it would have pushed me. It would have pushed me closer. We had born this way. I was still in the closet. I feel like the first like gay representation I saw that was like kind of the final straw for me in terms of like, I was like, I need to come out because I can't, I can't live without this. Ricky Martin. Was... David from Schitt's Creek with Patrick in Schitt's Creek. Oh. I remember, like, there was a moment where they, like, kiss on that show. And I was old at that point. I was, like, in my 20s. Uh-huh. And I watched that scene, and I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. I was like, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it was for me, honestly. I love think... Simon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, love Simon... Love, Simon, I think, really sent me into, like, a different planet, honestly. I mean, he was cute for sure, too. And then, like, seeing the coming out story, I was like, oh, I can do this. And then 
I mean, like after I was out, that I watched Love Victor, and it also ruined. I never my life. watched that one. Yeah, I think it wasn't really. Me- I mean, maybe it was meant for us. Maybe it was meant, but I don't know. That one really, that really put it into perspective. I said I have to come out. I also think something. That I cried put, on the plane. Something that really put us into into perspective for us is when we saw Moonlight together as closeted adult yeah. gay men and didn't say a word and sat in that car in dead silence on the yeah. way home. Dead silence. Moonlight really, really, really. I rewatched really... it recently. Did you, Joe? I have to rewatch Joe, and I because I, I that have was the to only... rewatch with the new context of obviously, being gay. Yeah. obviously. Why wouldn't we rewatch that? I watch it on the plane. I'm always on a plane, and I'm always watching a gay movie on the plane. What does that say about me? I'm you, I'm getting away from escaping. everything. I'm escaping mm-hmm. you're everything. Escaping everything. But I'm so far in the air, so I'm. It's might as well be gay. <laughs> might as well be gay in the air. Because you're not gay on the ground. <laughs> not gay on the ground, but watch it on the plane, and it. Being in the context that we are right now, I'm sure it was crazy. Full body chills, like emotion, tears. I don't think I cracked a little driplet droplet the in first that time. The first time, no, we were both freaking out. Stone we were freaking cold. out. Yeah, freaking Literally internally, full full body freaking. Right next to a macaroni grill. Never forget that either. I've never been to a macaroni grill. I haven't been to a macaroni grill either, but I kind of feel like we would be obsessed. (laughs) The perfect customers. Because are you like, have you been to Carrabba's? Andrew, have I been to Carrabba's? Your middle name is Carrabba. Yeah, come on. Welcome to the stage. I still make the Carrabba's copycat recipe of their soup, their chicken soup, their Italian style chicken soup. You do love their Italian style. I love Carrabba's. But I didn't really know if I loved their pastas. I don't know. I, I probably wasn't having it. I was having their soup. You're just going there and you're going to Carrabba's, the pasta the pasta place, and you're getting a uh-huh. soup. Didn't you go to Carrabba's for my high school graduation? Yeah, we went to Carrabba's for your high school graduation, I think. Okay. I went with your family. Yeah, I'm just confirming because you asked if I've ever been to a Carrabba's. You're right. I think that we've been to Carrabba's together. Well, it's just because like it's so quick. Like when we're having conversations, it's like we went from macaroni grill to Carrabba's and then I had to be able to string a sentence along and then I had to ask you a question. So I just felt like that was. A it is kind of like right now, it is kind of like we are yes ending to the craziest degree <laughs> and we're, the speed at which we're speaking is not normal. It's not normal. Um, it's to bring it back to gay speed. trauma. <laughs> Gay trauma. <laughs> no, to bring it back to no. just Valentine's Day. This is not a trauma episode because no. I feel like we're in a different place. And if it was trauma, I'm happy today. And that's all that matters. I got some trauma. Did things I didn't wanna. Was too afraid to tell This you. one missed me. But now I guess it's which fine. One, which one of your artists is this? That was like Billie Eilish. Oh, okay. Um, that was a deep cut. Have you ever had a Valentine? But did you celebrate Valentine's Day with Miss Jessie? No. You I'll were in you, Australia? I'll tell you why. I was on the flight. You've said this before. Yeah. That's crazy. It was, the, it was honestly... Speaking of flying to get away from feelings and being gay. Talk about leaving on February 13th and landing in Australia on February 15th, 15th. being in the air for Valentine's Day was kind of amazing. Because then it's just like you text Happy Valentine's Day. I do believe I sent her something. I'm sorry. I would hope to God. Flowers and chocolates had Andrew, to Andrew, it's crazy that you literally skipped Valentine's Day. I skipped Valentine's Day. And I think that I personally am always trying to skip Valentine's Day. I have a lot of love, right? I love love mm-hmm. for others. But when it comes to Valentine's Day for myself, what do you do when you're single? What do you do when you're single on and Valentine's And your friends Day? are in relationships. When we, your we, friends, we, you. When your friends are in relationship. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that, well, for the longest time I was single on Valentine's Day. But again, I just enjoyed the holiday. I was never feeling lonely. Yeah. I don't think I really understood what the feeling of loneliness was until, like, I turned 26 years old. Like, I really don't think it was, like, I think I was so used to that feeling that I was like, this is operating at baseline normal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Like, we lived in a perpetual state of loneliness alongside each other our whole childhoods. And I think that's why even when I was an adult and I was still living with you, it was was easy to feel lonely. Yeah. Which is crazy, because it's like, we really are never, but you can, as we've said before, you can be lonely, but you are not alone. Yes. You and the <laughs> and this this episode will always come back to Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I don't know, do with that what you will. Oh God, no, please. No, I know. Speaking no, about stop. someone who can't be alone. Stop it. That's stupid. I do think lately though, I have been 
opening myself I've been so closed off is what I've recognized. Yeah. And I well, think it's easy as a gay person to close yourself. It's easy as anyone who's ever felt rejected to close yourself off. And I'm often feeling rejected. But are you? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You no, are, dude, you're feeling pretty rejected a lot. I'm, I'm off. Yeah. I'm feeling rejected like almost nonstop, which is interesting because I think that's also <laughs> like a mindset thing. But at the same time, and I'm... And, and be honest, and you can speak about it on the pod. You face an extraordinary amount of rejection in, in the dating scene. Yes. An extraordinary amount for someone who gets comments on every episode being like, Andrew, please marry me. I want to be your little boy wife. Like, every yeah. single week. And you know what? You guys blocked people on... Like, it, no, it's mostly blocked and ghosts. Ghost, yeah. Which I think is a normal feeling for a lot of people, but... You know, it's it's nonstop. It, it, it must be crazy. Imagine. I can't How do you go to sleep at night? Still How do I go to I sleep at night? I can't believe you're still here. Well, I'm I'm a very strong willed person and I and I love life. <laughs> and even though even though people wanna block me after we've had multiple conversations, been on dates, I've I've sent them a few things. Then Something you like nudes. Why would you say that? Well why would you bring it up? Even after that, and then you block me. I'll never forget. Did I? I've have I went into detail about the one date where it was it was he was comment he was saying all of these nice things to me. It was raining. It was a gorgeous night. I honestly think it was in January, and he came. First of all, red flag. He came in his gym clothes. He said, "I'm coming from the gym." Do you accept the love you think you deserve? I think this is where I think we can get into this part. Because why was I saying, okay, come on your gym clothes. We're going to a cocktail bar. You came with your gym bag. Why was I even going on a date with him in the first That's place? That's what I'm saying. The standard there is pretty low. But the conversation was great. He was a normal person, at least to my knowledge. This is very Patreon. I'm going to let the listeners at home who aren't on Patreon know. And to our Patreon divas, like they know that this is nor- this is week after week. Like, week after it week. It is kind of crazy. It is you have of, really been through the ringer. Through the ringer. And it, it, just to, to close the story out, we were no, having... keep the stories going. We're having this conversation. It's amazing. Over the dinner table, we had two drinks. Afterwards, we're sitting out. We're standing outside of the restaurant. He goes, can I kiss you? I'm like, absolutely. I'm holding the umbrella. He's kissing me. It's raining over us in the middle of Williamsburg. A gorgeous night. I walk him to the train. It's raining out. We're holding each other's hands. It's raining out in January. You said it's a gorgeous night. Well, a go- it <laughs> oh, like, felt, it felt yes, like romantic. For some reason, I thought you meant weather-wise. But it I felt romantic. What you mean. Yes. Walked Where him back was the to date? the train. Where was the date? It was at, what was it? Uh, Strange Way? Strange Ways. Strange Ways. Yeah. Walked him back to the L, held hands, immediately. What? He was like holding my hand. He was like holding my hand, holding my hip, which I was like, this is weird. This is crazy. But did again, you want to fuck? Like, did you just not bring him back to the apartment? Is that even what happened there? Maybe. May- maybe. Because that's another confusing part about Blocked dating. Me within five minutes of leaving each other. Wait, you're kidding. I swear to God. Five minutes. He held my hip. So he was trying to fuck. He must have been. And then once you didn't put out, he was like, I'm not wasting time on this. Yeah, I mean... Which is horrible. An example of closing yourself off to opportunity. Like that man would not want to get intimate with you, just wanted mm-hmm. to fuck. Well, I saw him a few months later at um the, the Rosemont. The Rosemont. And he was with a he was with some other twink. <laughs> <laughs> so like maybe I just like was it it for him. And that's fine. Well, you just said some other twink as, <laughs> as I am a twink. Right. And as we've said, twink is a mindset. Twink is a mindset. Twink is a mindset. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. But I've learned over the past year to start qualifying people a little bit more post date and giving them more time to get to know them. I think I've been going on dates with people and trying at least three to four dates. Yeah. And that's how I know if I'm trying to fall in love with somebody. Otherwise, I'll go on one date with you. I'll see you. I'll take you back, and then I'll see you never again. That's not a good feeling. I don't like that feeling. I've any never longer. experienced that in my entire life. I don't like that feeling. I don't want that feeling anymore. 
I never even allowed that opportunity to happen. I guess I did. I guess anyone I ever went on a date with could have ghosted. But it was, I mean, if we were to put the amount of first dates you've been on and the amount of first dates I've been on in a bowl, like two different bowls, like yours would sink through the floor. I I would say probably a hundred. Yeah. And I probably have been on like 15 first dates. Now, a hundred. Multiply that by how much money I probably spend on a date. Oh my God. And then think about how many hours I've spent on those dates. And time is money. Time is money. And I've lost both. <laughs> so, <laughs> so where do we go from there? No. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day, you guys. Whoa. Where do you put it that way? <laughs> it's funny. And I've lost both. both. <laughs> so I want, you, the, I want that as a quote. But have you not learned from these lessons and these dates like i feel like now you know what you want and you're looking for it and i think that once i could figure out it took me time to learn what i wanted but once i started to know what i wanted now again now i'm ready and i recognize it needed to take some time to get there but now i'm here and i'm open i'm open bethany getting married question mark and all i'm gonna say is when i do do the drop with whomever I'm with, it's going to go nuts. It's going to go nuts. People are going to freak out. People, People are going to freak, freak the fuck out. People are going to freak yeah. out. And the caption is still going to be not Joe. <laughs> <laughs> We're all so cut off from like actually purposefully connecting with each other that no one's actually describing what they want. Like, no. No one's willing to because we're all too fucking afraid to. Because our whole lives as little gay boys, we were not allowed to express our feelings. No. And it, because and feelings were bad. Because feelings were bad. And then we grew up in an age where you can still hide because you can hide behind the screen. Dick and cock. Because dick and cock. Exactly. But it is really interesting talking to like gays who grew up 10 years before us mm. who didn't have these apps to fall into and like talking about their love stories or how they met people. I know, and it's, it's like literally a different world. Th- it's a completely different world. And it's actually must have been difficult, but also so normal and so nice mm-hmm. to be able to meet somebody at a bar if you wanted to meet them at the bar or meet them through a friend or go to a party. And you yeah. can still do that now. But in the back of your mind, it's still like growing up in a time where you just fell into the app culture makes it hard. Yeah. Makes it hard for the four letter word. L O V E. Oh my god. You know? I thought you for some reason I thought you were like gonna say Fuck. something horrible, even worse. I don't know. I don't know. There's I, a lot of four letter words. Well that's actually that's <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> Do you think that like and I know that you have to speak from imagination, so that's unfortunate, but I think that I think you have such a vivid colorful, vast, beautiful imagination that it's mm-hmm. almost like you lived these experiences. Yeah. If you had to choose between going out to dinner, having dinner, like ordering dinner in, cooking dinner at home, or doing some other activity for Valentine's Day, it could be anything in the world. What would you pick as your ideal Valentine's Day date? I think it's an activity. Oh, I wow. think I almost like, I think I would want to do like a pasta making class. Something okay. that would still lead into eating. But I think it like. You get a sense of fun. But here's what I'll say. I went to Omakase last Valentine's Day. And if you're doing a pasta making class, you're doing it with other couples. So it's not like very intimate, it was, right? I The Omakase was the biggest mistake I ever made. Although it was funny. Like we were able to make it funny. But it was like sitting at a 12 person table with five other straight couples. And then me and Ross. Yeah. Like being arm in arm with a stranger on their Valentine's Day date and being having to speak like this because everyone was directly next to you. Being in a group setting on Valentine's Day is a choice to make. It's kind of like, I get what you mean. I, I, I When you were explaining that, I was like, can you imagine bringing someone to like a hibachi? <laughs> yeah, like that's that was exactly like, the same setup as, as the omakase. Because me in a hibachi place in general, I'm already sick to my stomach with anxiety. Any situation, and it's a shame we're so individualist, but I can't stomach eating dinner at a communal table with strangers. No. It is genuinely one of the most insane things we What's wrong do. with us? But I, I, I get where you're coming from, though, with, with the pasta making class. I just think that you'd people. be like, because it's also like, 
but I want to do something. You, you know this, and I wonder how you feel about this. I remember when I first came out, I was like, not there was no PDA happening. You know, like it was like I didn't even want people to know I was on a date when I yeah. was on a date because I was like, God forbid, like something homophobic happens. And then slowly, as you age, I think you get more used to it. And then when you live in a major city, it's Doesn't like whatever. Matter. But there's also this element of it where you're like. I'm on a date, but then other people are watching me on this. Like, it was like, I was like, everyone here is observing each other's patterns. Like you're on that pasta making class and the other couples are like watching you on your Valentine's Day I'm like day holding date. his hips and like <laughs> kissing his neck. You know what I mean? Like, but that, yeah, I get what you mean. A pasta making class is probably not for Valentine's Day. I just feel like dinners, I guess it could be like a really nice, different dinner. Otherwise, I'm just like so... Does bored yeah. of a dinner date like it's just normal it's like i can make you dinner i can i think i would rather the cooking of dinner because i feel like there's more love associated with that like i'm putting love yeah. into the food and then like you can be together at home which is kind of nice okay we're gonna you're gonna be i want you to be on your valentine's day date okay i'm ready okay i'm like have i been dating this person for a little bit yeah. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey, Andrew. How are you? I'm, do- I'm like, doing really well. I mean, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I got you these. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I... Fuck. I... Fuck. I knew I forgot something. No. Listen. I... I'm so sorry. I totally forgot to get you anything. It's... You don't have to get me anything when I know what I'm getting later. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, well, so um, what did what are we doing? Like, I know we're at your apartment oh, shit. right now. Like, I thought that do? you like, made a resi or something. No. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I'm sure we could, like, look online and, like, find something. Yeah, we can either do that or we probably, I mean, like, I can just go to the, should we just go to the store and, like, pick out something, like, nice to eat? Like, some steaks and stuff and I can make them? I actually, I just lit. A diptyque candle that has to burn the whole way, otherwise the burn memory will like fuck you know it'll like fuck up the candle. It's pretty oh. expensive. Okay. Would you be able to run to the store and then like when you get back, I'll have like music playing and like I'll open a bottle of wine and you like, have you have the wine. Let me just let me just make sure. Oh fuck, I don't have any wine. Okay. The liquor That's store right. is right around the corner. Okay, so uh, let me th- let me walk through this. I'm going to get two bottles of wine just because I think that like, will be amazing. Yeah. And then I'll go get the ingredients for our food and I'll be back in like 20 minutes. I'm, I, this sucks. I'm it's, sorry. It's okay. I mean, like, listen, it happens. Like, it's let's just make the most of the night tonight. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. 20 minutes later, you're back. All right. So I think what we're going to make tonight is I'm going to make like a cute little pasta dish there's gonna be some like veggies in it and i also got some like steaks just because i feel like that was nice that sounds so good right with some red wine and then like chocolates i kind of stink from the gym if you can get started i'll just get in the shower oh my god the shower and then when i'm out of the shower like i'll handle the rest yeah i want you to take it easy honestly if i cook can you clean maybe yeah for sure we'll put it in the dishwasher oh that's (laughs) i actually would prefer that okay great okay cooking in the kitchen i'm cooking in the kitchen showering for 20 to 25 minutes 25 you you fully like jerk off in the shower i'm just like it's a long it's a full body shower it's a long shower yeah yeah yeah. so you're like maybe he's douching yeah oh my god i would literally hope i'm like babe like yeah babe dinner's ready fuck okay give me one second toilet flush comes out and like, like he's by the way this man though He's like really ripped. He's wearing a tiny little towel. Okay. He's gorgeous. Yeah. He's, I, well, I'm getting the vibe that he was gorgeous. <laughs> Why? Because I think that like this date is going so poorly. And I really would for hope to God that I'm never in this situation. But I do believe I would be caught in this situation. Yeah. And that's what really sucks. Yeah. Because I would continue this date. I would continue because it's Valentine's Day. Right. So he's out of the shower now. He's like, oh, babe, this looks fucking crazy. Like, you did such a good job with this. I'm like, yeah, it is pretty dope, right, babe? Yeah, it's like fucking amazing, bro. Yeah. Should we eat? Let's eat. TV trays out. TV trays are out. We're sitting on the couch. What do you want to watch? I'm like, 
are you up on like are you like you want to just put something like on the background like great british bake off or like a little like or do you want to watch like a movie? It's like you want like, something like Yeah, I'll watch a movie. I also have been like binge watching House lately. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that show. It's so No, I've seen good. Housewives. But I haven't seen House. You've never seen House? That's no. cr- you have to we have to watch House. You're gonna love House. Okay. I'm on season four, episode eight. Okay, let's let's put in season four, episode eight. Let's just pick up where you left off. Press this fucking house. I'm like So like what are you <laughs> so honestly like my day was pretty crazy because i was when i was at work what yeah. was going on was just insane i just had yeah. a yeah, yeah, crazy yeah, conversation yeah. with my yeah. boss and i just feel i'm honestly like a little bit pissed but it sucks bro it's, yeah it just feels better now because i'm with you yeah same baby yeah me too i'm like rubbing his leg he's finished the meal he's finished you haven't meal. taken a bite yet okay i'm like whoa you scarfed that. You must have loved my meal. Yeah, I was fucking hungry. I'm also kind of hungry. Well, you have a full meal in front of you. You should probably eat it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. This is a good show, right? This is good. Yeah, are you like it? You're liking it? Yeah, I'm liking it, babe. Who's your favorite character? Um, The house. <laughs> I just like need this date to end because I Well, am... why haven't you ended it? Is my question. It's been one of the worst dates I've ever heard. This man does not respect you. He's still in his towel, binge eating as fast as he can. Well, I mean, like if he was in his towel, like that's fine because it's Valentine's Day and I would think that I would be taking Andrew, up the it's towel and that's Valentine's why I was hungry. Valentine's Day and this man forgot didn't get you a gift, didn't plan dinner, had you go out and buy it, had you buy the wine, showered for the whole cooking experience, sat down, put on his show, made you watch it, ate the whole meal while you sat there, and you did not say a single thing against You let him do it all. I let him do it all. I did. That was one of the worst Valentine's Days I've ever experienced. And this goes back to my point. I waste a lot of time on these losers. That's why that was the point I was trying to make. Up. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I'm in these situations... And I've clearly been in these situations before. I'm already there. You know what I mean? And that's a horrible way to you look at it. You can go home. I know. But it's Valentine's Day. But he sucked. And I want to. But why don't you suck someone who appreciates you? Like, he doesn't even appreciate you. Because it's already fed. Valentine's Day, you so I'm already he, there. You fed that man. Well, he jerked off in the bathroom. Well, he took a shit in the bathroom. He was shitting in the bathroom. You never even figured out if he douched. Did he douche? No, he didn't douche, Joe. He doesn't bottom. (sighs) This made me absolutely (laughs) miserable. Well, no. It's about avoiding a situation like that. It's a really... This is an incredible episode. Even House. I don't want to watch House, actually. Let's not watch TV. Let's talk. It's Valentine's Day. I just cooked you this fucking dinner, bitch. It's, you know what I'm learning? I can't bring my people-pleasing tendencies into a relationship. You can't. That's so important. Otherwise, it's doomed. It's doomed. It's doomed. Think it's about doomed. how I want you to imagine being being it's on doomed. the receiving end of that. Like, you don't know if that person even likes you because they're just doing everything to make sure that you like them. <sighs> I, like, don't want to do this any longer, <laughs> kind of, like, I just feel as if, though, I'm good. I'm good without a man. No! How is that the solution? <laughs> how did we get there? <laughs> Me giving up. You're like, if I can't people please, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> I'd rather be dead. No. I, you're right. You're right. It's it's about saying no. It's about standing up for myself. And it's about if I'm going to cook you a dinner, you're going to at least chop the vegetables. You're going to get on your knees and suck my dick the moment that I walk out. Like, you know, like, that's the thing. It's like one or the other. It's yeah. like, give me the fucking attention. I best believe... I'm still, still bejeweled. bejeweled when I walk in the fucking room. I can still make the whole place shimmer. shimmer. And you know what? You better, you better cut that damn steak. You better cut that steak. See, become a become a dom in the kitchen. You better cut that steak. And we sit on the couch. Okay, yeah, I'll sit in the couch with you. I'm not putting on house. We're not watching house. You become a few. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Don't make me smack you in front, in front of your, your cousins. cousins. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow, Joe. I really do believe. Thank you. I hope that that helps. Thank you for taking me through that date because I think what I learned was I've been on a lot of dates like that. Was I it be- familiar to you? I was wondering. It was extremely familiar to me. 
it was extremely familiar to me because I do believe that I can have a conversation with anybody. Yeah. Because it's, you know, once your conversation conversation 101 is sometimes you continue to go, it's the yes and. Mm-hmm. And say that shit with your chest. And-, and, and you don't want it to go poorly. No. But they think that's part of it. It's like it being okay with a date being bad. Yeah. It's the same thing as being okay with sex being bad that we talked about. It's like sometimes a date can be horrible. And that's actually a wonderful thing because that means that you realize mm-hmm. that you don't want to be on a date with that person. And I went in the same place, strange ways in Brooklyn. My second date with this or this my first date with this first this one guy. The waitress, when he went to the bathroom, went, told you, get out. She said, "Is the safe's not going well, right? And you were like, no, it's going fine. I mean, like, there are just a few things. The waitress is saying this is a bad the waitress, date. The waitress, because she was, she we really hit it off. And she was like, he's not the one for you. I and she knew. Right now. And I said, well, he did say he doesn't like chocolate. That was hard. That was it. That was it. Dessert. What, what, it's Valentine's. If it, no, he, that was Valentine's. Day. <laughs> but it's a date. Have you gone on a date on Valentine's Day? I feel like you have. I feel like almost last year. I actually do think that I went on a date on Valentine's Day last year. I did. Oh, wow. Wow. That didn't go anywhere. Well, maybe this year might be different. Hmm. We'll see. People are people are biting onto like wood planks, freaking out right I now. I think also it's like embarrassing because like he like listens <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> I mean, like you've been in love now. Yeah. And last year, you started dating. You were, like, only a few months in. It was, like, it was like five, five months. months in. Yeah, now it's, like, so a now being, like, situation. a year and a half into the relationship. Last year, there was a lot of pressure on Valentine's Day. Yeah. I was, like, this needs this to be year? perfect. I don't care. I will. I want to I wanna be wined and dined. I want to be treated right. And I want a cute gift. And that gift, I want to be. And I'll say it here. And if someone knows Ross... No strangers, please DM him this. But if you do know him personally, because some of Ross's friends do listen, I want a stuffed animal. That's all I want. I don't want anything fancy. I want a build a bear. Do you have like a specific type of build a bear that well, you would the like? Problem. I'm kind of getting, leaving that up to him because I've, every time I see a build a bear post on Instagram, I just send it to him. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy. I feel like I, uh, I feel like it it is a different experience now because there's a lot less pressure. If Christmas just happened, you know, it's like, I don't need a gift. I need an extravagant moment. Yeah. I do want to go to a nice dinner, I have to say. Okay. I have want you, to go somewhere flash. Have you booked? I hope Ross has. Last year I booked, and it was Omakase. Well, I would, ho- I would hope Ross has. I would hope Ross has. And I would hope he started to think about that that gift as well. Tell me, Joe, like, what does it feel like to be in love? Now that you've been in love for a year and a half, what does it feel like? Um... And for the listeners who have never been in love. I would say it's a feeling of security and a feeling mm-hmm. of like being understood more okay. than anything else. I feel like it's like someone who I could say really anything to and know that it's like. You're not going to leave me. Yeah. And like. There is a lot of perks that go. I mean, like sexually, there is a lot of perks that go along with it, obviously. Yep. And then just like in terms of thinking ahead to the future, it's also that it's like, well, like. What will my life look like in five years with this person? Instead mm-hmm. of being like, well, what will my life look like? And then like bringing that person in second. It's like there's a priority situation that you have to kind of take into account. Um, one becomes two. One becomes two. I think two. it's two becomes one. Two, be- <laughs> <laughs> two becomes one. That's actually a better way to look at it. Me. One, one becomes, becomes two. two. <laughs> no, two becomes one. Two becomes You guys become... One in your thought, not in your thoughts, but it is easy to be able to explain how you're feeling on day to day basis. Is that person's there to listen to you? They're there to like comfort you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also made a lot of my friendships like less um, intense in a bad way. I feel like I went through a lot of friendships that might as well have been romances, like, like for like five or six years straight of different people. And yep. I was like, that kind of like gives way once you actually are like dating someone where you're like, oh, that's where I'm supposed to be putting all of this energy. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. And you, what did you say to me last year? I feel like by what month? You were like, in five months, you're going to be in a relationship. I think yeah. by next year, I'll be, I'll be October for sure. I think that by next year, I'm going to be experiencing a, a solid Valentine's Day. 
Guaranteed. 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 Of a relationship that's hopefully hopefully at least seven to eight months in. Whoa. Mama, let's research. Well, I, I gotta start. I, uh, Baby, let the be- games begin. Let the games begin. Are you uh-huh. ready for it? I'm ready for it. Are they ready, ready for it? it? I would hope I'm so. ready for it. I haven't really been on the app. Like, I'm talking about sex apps. I'm not really on the apps anymore. I don't really even go out. I don't oh, really geez. go out. I don't really go out. Were you like at the Eagle like two weeks ago? No, I haven't been to the Eagle in years. The cock then? No, you were just at the Eagle recently, Joe. No, I wasn't. Yeah, maybe like <laughs> maybe like three months ago. No, it was when I was in Australia. Oh, it was you were, when you were on show. I didn't have a good time. But you went. Is I, just, you just, you I went. Been, you haven't been in years. I went in like two months ago, but I don't remember. I don't really remember it because it was kind of like a why. I think that was kind of my final straw. I think when I was thinking to myself the entire time I was there, I was like, why am I here? Yeah. I'm like, why am I trying to put out? Like, I'm not. I'm like, fine. I'm going to go. And I left. I'll always say it. Really, what, what, fucking, what can't your hand do? What can't your hand do? And I've always felt that way. Yeah. And then I like look around and I'm like, I, I don't want to be judging people in this space. It's supposed to be a no judge. It's supposed to be a judgment free zone. zone. Like a planet fitness. It is like a planet. The eagle is like a planet fitness. And I'm like, you know what? I look around and I'm like, before I think something that I regret, I'm going to leave. Well, this we space. learned that lesson. It's like, if, you, yes. if you're in the place, you have to respect it because yes, you chose to correct. show up. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But this year is about opening yourself up and realize in many ways, in many, in many ways, Realizing and listen that to Patreon for that information. You have worth. I have worth. You have worth, Andrew. I have worth. You have you're you're worthy. I'm worthy. I shouldn't put myself in situations that please the other person first and me second. Wow. And you know, once I learn those things, maybe next year someone will give me a box of chocolates. Stop. Maybe. Good children to the guidance office. Hi, good children. Um, my name is Maddie. I have a question that I have my own opinions on, um, but I just want to hear like your guys' thoughts on it. Um, Valentine's Day with like oh, I hate the word situationship, but with a situationship or like someone that you've been dating or saying that you're not official with. First, I want to know like what you guys think about like spending Valentine's Day with them, and then second, I want to hear like gift giving. Because, like, I think it's okay to spend the day with them and, like, I'll even get someone flowers, but nothing else. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. <laughs> Bye. I think you said it best, Maddie. I, Maddie, I think, yeah, you definitely took the words out of our mouths. I, I think with a situation ship, sure, you can spend Valentine's Day with them. Why not? Yeah. Like, if, if it's going to be casual and if they want to keep it casual. Knee deep in the passenger seat and you're eating me out. Is it casual now? Yeah. But, yeah, keep it casual. And if it's casual and if it's a situation ship and they don't want anything serious and you don't want anything serious, then you don't need to give them a serious gift. I agree. Flowers works. Get the box of cho- – get them the Whitman sampler. Or Tony's Chocolate Lonely probably does a fantastic <laughs> Valentine's Day box. And I'm like thankful you said her name. Tony is a... F- Tony's a woman. Hi. Um, so this actually just came to me. This is perfect time for Valentine's Day because I've been going... I've been trying to go on more first dates because I used to have a lot of anxiety about it. Um, and I was wondering what is an ideal first date for you guys? And like, as someone with anxiety, do you guys have recommendations for a first date that has like lower stress? Um, yeah, let me know. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you too. Ideal date for me. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like I have ideal ideas, but I never really play them out. I'm always going to dinner. But you spend money. On first dates, you're going to dinner still? Yeah. Didn't we learn this lesson? We did. No, I'm normally still going to grab a drink. But I think that the – I've been on a few dates before where it was like, I know this is crazy and it would have to be on a weekend. But, like, 
grabbing a coffee, something that doesn't hold you there. Right? I think yeah, dinner holds you there. That's dinner's what, crazy. Dinner's crazy. Drinks easy because it could be one drink yeah. and you're out. For me, it really is just drinks. It's drinks. It's it. It's easy. It's casual. It's fine. If it's, I mean, it's cold as hell right now, yeah. so you're not really like outside. But I did love that park date that I went on. Yeah, that's fun too. But that's also how do you leave a park date? How do you leave a park date? And it was from well, I gotta go. My dog's shitting over there. I'm gonna go ignore it. It would have to be like, are you gonna be like? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, well, I have to go. My I think calling. something that's always helped me with anxiety when it came to dates was always giving a heart out before I even got into the date. Like, even my first date with Ross, I remember saying, oh, I have a party to go to tonight, so I'm going to have to, like, wrap it up early. Mm-hmm. And then, like, once the date was going well, I was like, I'm not going to that party. Yeah. And then that also adds a layer of, like, oh, my God. It is like You're, like, willing to say no to like... the party. Hi. Okay. This is Kate. This is Diane. And first of all, we love y'all. We, yeah. li- we listen to you all all the time. But our question is, what do you do... If you <laughs> if you are like at your like partner's house, like your significant other's place, and you clog the toilet, and like Andrew probably has experience with this because he's my IBS sister, but <laughs> yeah. maybe or maybe not speaking from experience, like what do you do? How do you not make it the most awkward thing ever? Yes. Okay, we love you. Love y'all. Bye. Well, I have something to say to you first. And I would say out of the past three days, I've clogged the toilet daily. Bro, like, what are you bro, doing? Bro, it's not even me, bro. I do believe that, like, something's wrong with the toilet. Something's wrong with you, Andrew. Like, how are you saying That's something? Not very How nice much toilet to paper are you using? Well, not it's, a lot. Not a lot. I don't believe that because when, when I'm when trying you're to be cautious here, with the paper. When you're not here, like I will use, like the toilet paper doesn't go, disappear. When you're home, it's like we go through like six rolls a week. Like, what's happening? I need more fiber. Yeah. It's just well, I've been getting in the shower. Well, we don't have a fucking bidet. That's gonna that's gonna change a lot. Some people can just shit <laughs> and like they don't need and i'm not some people but it's like how are you clogging the why toilet why put me daily? in a box how are you clogging, why put me in a box how are you dodging? clogging the toilet daily i did hear you actually and again we've talked about this i can hear everything that happens in our bathroom and that's horrible, horrible news horrible but for both sides recently before andrew was going on a date i like heard the toilet flush and then i heard like a what the fuck? And then I no, was like, what is happening in there? There was a problem with that. that wasn't the, oh, I'll tell you one thing. Was it a douche Yanka? I mean, and we're going to get back to the question. What the hell? We have the same douche, right? No, I got rid of my big, my thick boy. Would you, would you squeeze and sometimes the cap would pop off? No. Too much pressure I'm applying, I guess, when I squeeze. And then the whole, all the water gets on the floor. Ew, I can't live with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're you're blowing douche water on our floor? No, Joe, because I lay a towel underneath. So it sucks for that towel, but I'm looking after your fucking floor. Okay? But it is it is just getting everywhere. Not my not my whatever. You know what? I'm done with that. But have I clogged the toilet at a partner's house before on a date? No, I actually have you never clogged the toilet on a date. No, I haven't clogged the toilet on a date. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. But I definitely like have clogged toilets at friends' houses. And like yeah. that's also just as mortifying. But like, what are you gonna do? If I was to clog a toilet on a date, which I can only assume is gonna happen within the next couple of months. Yeah. F- one, if they had a plunger in there, don't one, even two, worry. Three. I'm so well versed in a plunger at this point. Like I actually my forearm strength is through the roof. Secondly, if they didn't have a plunger. I think that is where I would run into. That's hell. It's hell when someone doesn't have a plunger because what the fuck are you doing? And where do you go from there? Because it's not like you go. Have you seen a long came Polly? No. First of all, worth the watch. Okay. Should I? I have to watch. There's a, there's a shit scene that bar none is something that would happen to you. Okay. It's because if they didn't have the plunger, then you go out there and you're like, Hey, hey, Diva. Diva. <laughs> hey, Queenie. So 
funny thing is actually um I the toilet is the <laughs> yeah the toilet is clogged and there's no plunger and they're like oh shit like i don't have a plunger man i don't even I have, have a plunger bowel movements so i'm like all right well <laughs> i actually like gotta finish up in there kinda so is there any way we could get a plunger i would be i would be mortified oh my god what am i saying jesse plunged my shit in college. Yeah. But she had the plunger, so she came over. I think it. you should stop telling that story, not for your sake, but for her sake. For saying something like, imagine being Jesse and hearing that statement. Jesse plunged my shit. But she did. And, that's and really I think beautiful. she would own it. That's amazing. Yeah. I've never experienced that. Good, Good children, children to, to the, the cafeteria. cafeteria. Okay. You want that Laffy Taffy. We just left the gym. Usually we're getting our snack post pod. But you know what? It's a new year. <laughs> it's a new year. We're in the car together anyway, so we're deciding we're gonna get a little bit of oatmeal. Why not go to Bengal Bowls in Massapequa Park on Long Island and get a little bit of oatmeal as our meal of the week? I'll tell you one thing though, next to Bengal Bowls, is it called Once Bitten Donuts? You've been biting those donuts more than <laughs> once. Yeah. I'll say that. All about, they're about quad bitten donuts. I might get a dome. A routine. Well, the thing about an icy cold fruit after a workout is that you tend to be sugar deficient. So when you have a scoop or two, especially with a peanut butt, then it's through the roof. It's through the roof. You get the nutrients you need, you get the sugar levels back to normal. And it's sweet and tasty. The thing that we once had, I feel like, back in the day was going to like Soul Cycle and then going to Bangle Bowls. Yes. And And Bangle Bowls, like for the most part, we were getting the acai bowls. But I'm not someone at this point in life that can handle an acai bowl. Well, and why is that? It just You don't want a super fruit? I love all of my fruit super, but I don't love that much frozen blended fruit. Well, the thing about an icy cold fruit after a workout is that you tend to be sugar deficient. So when you have a scoop or two, especially with a peanut butt, then it's through the roof. It's through the roof. You get the nutrients you need, you get the sugar levels back to normal, and it's sweet and tasty. This is one of the most beautiful little strips. La, 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 la. Expert personal trainers at Crunch Fitness. Oh my God, Joe, it's not one spitting. Have you ever had no -fo doco? No, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. They're unbelievable. The only no -fo doco they had was in, correct me if I'm wrong, out east. Well, North Fork. Yeah. Very good. How did no -fo doco end up in South Shore, Long Island, is my question. I'm gonna knock, oh, they're open. I'm gonna get a donut just for us. You're parked like this, and it's parking like this. He says, nobody cares. He says, nobody cares. So the plan is, we're gonna go to Bengal Bowls and get home. We're gonna go to Nofo Doko and get a donut, and then we're gonna go to the Massacre Park and get a coffee. I don't know what you're thinking. Did they get a huge check recently? No. No. This is not gonna video of these. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Just got spotted. It's best. Why does it feel different It here? feels really different on island. It feels really different to hear podcast gays from a fellow gay. So Nofo Doko is serving up this gorgeous cannoli donut. How do we go about? Positives to negatives. Positives. Soft dough. <laughs> Fresh dough. Negatives. Flavor and taste. Flavor. This wasn't bad, but in my head, I thought it was gonna be something completely different. No, that's, that's good. That's actually very good cannoli, and the cream is very good. No, that's very good. Here's what I would suggest. Make that a, like a Boston cream with cannoli cream. Yeah, don't put this in it. No. Put it on top, lay it on top. Well, we got a few hours. We got an hour, maybe. Take a shower and then get back and you edge for a bit. A bit. Now, what does uh, that exactly uh, mean? For me or for you? Like, what is that vision? What, what vision do you have for me? So you're saying I start edging the moment you drop me off? <laughs> <laughs> and do I wrap it up before you get back? Or yes. do I just keep the edge? <laughs> no, no, no. Podcast? no, you have to, you have to wrap and then you like 
sit in it for a second. Like you said, like you're like, oh my God, I wish I continued. And then when I leave, you continue. So like there you like add like a little break. You blue ball it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the whole podcast, I'm at 10 out of 10 horny, only thinking about my dick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, time to eat our bangle bowls, take showers and get back to that studio. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That was a lot of talking. That workout was kind of crazy. And the donut, we had some feedback. <laughs> Listen, it's no disrespect to, to no photo co. Because I do think that they have a really good dough. Yeah. I think that, honestly, I'd be willing to go back anytime you want. Anytime you want. Thank you. That's And that is a crazy statement to make because I could be like, Joe, we wrap. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. Don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. We haven't gotten a review in a little. We've, we're getting That's some still. True. We are getting some still, Joe. But like, you know when we got like 700 in two weeks? Yeah, I mean that's when we first started. I guess you're right, but there, we definitely have more than seven hundred listeners. Yeah, you're tell right. you that, tell you that, seven hundred thousand. So now we, we're we actually just crossed that threshold of seven hundred thousand. We're listeners. on the way to seven hundred thousand weekly listeners. Yeah, so we're if you haven't way. if you haven't written a review yet on Apple Pod, please write a little something sweet out of love for the Valentine's Day of it all, and don't forget to hit that bell button, get notifications on YouTube. We're kind of growing. We're kind of growing in many ways. And if you know a gay, you are gay, send it to send this podcast to some gays. Right? Wouldn't yeah, you wow. say? Wow. I didn't know that you liked, you fucked with gay people like that. Well, I fuck with gay people. I fuck gay people. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. And we'll see you on Friday with the, the naughty half of this episode. However, it gets darker than it does naughty. But it's also fun. Oh, it's fun. No matter where it's fun. But Marilyn Monroe gets brought up. Um, and until then, you can find us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe, where I'm being canceled for saying that Colleen Ballinger's apology song was actually kind of good. Maybe not true. Maybe she wasn't telling the truth, but the song itself. Is it good? I got to listen. It, 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 you've never heard it? No. Imagine. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarell, on TikTok at Andrew underscore Muskie. And I hope you find so much love and so much happiness this Valentine's Day season. And if you don't, you could always pour more love into your parasocial relationship and join us on Patreon. And you know where I'll be on Valentine's Day. So if you're Second at home. dick and cock at the eagle. Exactly. But at least I'll have a box of chocolates with me. I'll cut that out if you want. <laughs> no, please. People, be, I'm not gonna be such a <laughs> If people show up to the, the Eagle <laughs> on Valentine's Day looking for me with a box of chocolates, <laughs> I wanna know who love is. I, I want, want you to show me. me. I wanna I feel who love is. I want you to hold, hold me. Because we are all broken inside. Where are the dreams that we had? Can't find the dreams that we had. Oh, 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 oh. I just I hope. hope the sun will show us the path Savior It's not me That was weird It got weird The vibe shifted in the last 65 seconds Oh to sadness Yeah Yeah no well Now we have to live with that for the rest of the day <laughs>